So quite a few people have um, been asking me uh, all about setting up. Uh, basic questions that you sometimes forget about when you when you're somebody who's fished for a, for a long time. Um, I get a lot a lot of questions asked about um, wire tracers, fluorocarbon leaders, and all all that sort. So I thought I'll uh, and also want things like what knots to use. So I thought I'd uh, I'd cover it all in one. So what I use, uh, no matter what I'm fishing for, uh, it'll be a wire trace. I always use a wire trace um, because I, I know I know how um, pike's teeth are really sharp and uh, and the wire protects you against against that. Um, what where the problem comes is these days uh, a lot of people use uh, fluorocarbon leaders um, and it gets a little bit confusing for anybody starting up. Uh, they don't know where to go for a fluorocarbon leader, wire trace, or as some people have even mentioned to me, uh, it's that confusing to think they've got to have a wire trace and a fluorocarbon leader tied to the braid, which is just really confusing. So what I always suggest to people is you start off with a wire trace. Uh, I always use it. I know AD always uses it and a few of us. Uh, it's down to personal preference and, and, and also uh, experience. What you find is a lot of people in, the, in Europe, Scandinavia, etc., they might use fluorocarbon leaders. Uh, and you do find some people in this country using fluorocarbon leaders. However, um, the people that do that are basing it on uh, experience and knowledge and then they're going for it with what they know. So, But what I would suggest to anybody who's starting up, wire trace. Don't do anything else other than use a wire trace. Forget your fluorocarbon leaders. Uh, you're fishing for pike and they've got sharp teeth. Uh, and, and if you get your fluorocarbon leader wrong, which is what a lot of people do, um, you're using the wrong size and you just get bitten through. You lose lows and you lose and you kill pike. So a wire trace. Um, and basically, it's a simple, simple setup. When you've got your wire trace, nothing else. That's my braid. And it's tied on there with a, with a Palomar knot. And that's the easiest one that I find to tie and it's safe as houses. It never comes free. I'll show you how to do that in a second. I get some close ups and my wire trace and that's it. Uh, and that's and it, this is my heavy setup. This is my, my jerk bait setup, my proper piking setup. So it's my 80 pound braid and my 100 pound titanium trace. Um, there's loads of tracers. What you need to do is get into making your own tracers. Uh, there is some half decent traces on the market, but titanium is just miles better. If you can get any, whatever size you're fishing, if you can get titanium, uh, there's like not too kinky, you can tie yourself, um, but you can get it in various sizes so you can match it to yourself. So if you like perch fishing and you have to per perch and pike, you can use a, a 15 pound trace, titanium trace, and it'll be safe as houses. And, and, yeah, and it is really tiny. I mean, it, you can't really see the thickness of this on here, but I mean that's hundred pound. It's not, it's not massive. So if you imagine that, virtually one ten for that, fifteen pound, it's going to be tiny. So you can use it, use a wire trace, no matter what you're fishing for. Titanium lasts better. If you can't afford the titanium ones, just your normal seven strand and whatever. Um, I often use the Fox Easy Twist just because it's easy to do, um, and and that's. The only problem with that kind of uh, trace it doesn't, it doesn't last long. Once you get a few jacks, they can they can kink it up, and you'll see that one. That, that is a that is a new trace, but uh, a brand new a brand new titanium trace will last year. It'll last year hundred fish or more. So uh, we'll have a look at the knot. We'll try and get you some close up to the knot. Show you how to tie it. So your wire trace typically it'll come with a swivel at one end. snap clip at the other. Your swivel, that is the end that you're going to tie to your uh, fishing line. So in my case it's braid um, and I, su I suggest braid for low fishing or most low fishing situations just because you get a lot more, lot more feel. And obviously your clip end is going to be the one that connects to your low. So to tie it onto my braid, I use I use what's called a Palomar knot. It's not really easy to see. However, make a simple loop like that first. Just fold your line back on it. Simple loop like that with three or four inch, and then thread 
your loop through the hole in your swivel. So you've now got on there. And then what we're going to do then is basically just turn the loop back on itself. Like that, like that. So it just comes back round to make another circle and another loop. And then you're going to push the end of the loop round the back and through. So it's basically like you're tying a normal standard whatever knot when you tie your shoelace type knot. So what you've got now is just that. So it's just gone through the eye, round in a circle and then back through. So you've got that line rip round there. And then the loop, you're going to put the end of your trace through this loop and then just pull it through tight. So what you've got now is that. And then, so you've got your tag end there, you've got a circle, you've got your, your loop there that you, you've threaded through and you're out there. Not easy to show this. And then pull it tight. And if you just grab both tag ends, uh, tag end and main line, and pull at the same time, that'll just tighten up. And that is not going anywhere. Focus, yep, there we go. That knot is safe as houses, and you can just snip a chunk of that off. That, that is strong, that's not going to go anywhere. I have, I've never I once, when I, I once, years ago, when I started fishing with braid, I asked the question, what what knot is best um, for braided line? Uh, and quite a few people said, use a Palomar knot, safe as houses. So I've used a Palomar knot, and it's been safe as houses. I've never had it once slip. So uh, there, may be, there may be other knots that work, other knots that people use. Um, but what you'll find with, with me is I like to use things that I know work and you've got confidence in it and you're not worrying about that all the time. But obviously you're going to put your load on onto your snap. Uh, these ones are the lock snaps which I like to use. You can get these in a few sizes. If you buy the these ready-made uh, titanium tracers they already come with it but you can make your own tracers you can buy so you might get a different snap. However, this one that's it that's it closed. And what you're trying to do is put that on. what you're trying to do is just pinch that with your, your thumb and finger and you pinch it and just lift that hook over the wire. Not easy to show you. Come on, fingers. And then open. So that's it open. And then basically, put your. I've got I, this one's got a split ring on the on the on the treble, and I prefer to use it with a, a split ring. Um, just to open it up. Thread it on. What I've seen some people do um, is just hook that over there. I can show you that, I'll just slowly turn it around. I've seen some people do that, and that's that's incorrect. That is not your, how your stay lock snaps works. You push. See that loop? You're going to push that loop over the main wire at the top. Like that. 
and that's fastened correctly. There's other, there's other snaps, but like I said before, um, with my knot, uh, I pretty much stick to that. Even if I use, even if I use smaller traces that I tie myself, I'll just buy a smaller size um, stay lock snap, and, and I just like to use those ones just because um, I've got confidence in them to work. Uh, they're not the easiest if you've got, if you're knocking on a bit and your hands aren't the best, or if it's um, if it's minus five and you're fishing and your hands aren't working properly because it's cold, they're not the easiest to work. But the whole idea of a, of a clip is to keep it safe and keep your lure attached. You don't want to be losing lures because the clips are rubbish. And that's that's pretty much how to set up your your rod. Things to check on your on your braid is just make braid is at the end of the day it's more of a uh, it's more prone to um, more prone to wear and tear. It, it rubs against rocks and things. So you particularly find that your you, your section just above your just above your trace might be a bit that rubs against branches, rocks, trees and things. So that's the bit that you need to keep your eye on. Um, and if you see signs of it fraying, then you need to change it. Now my um, my rod and reel uh, are pretty much always left set up, um, already made up. When you're in fishing, um, sometimes time can be crucial, so my rod is set up like that, um, and I'm ready to go. Uh, I see a lot of people who will get, who'll get to the fishing spot, get to the bank, and spend the next 10, 15, 20 minutes banging and clattering around, uh, setting up the gear. Um, and that's fishing time, so my rod's already set up. If I know I'm going fishing the day before, it's ready, I've checked everything up, I've checked everything out. Uh, but typically that stays set up like that, so because it stays up, like I said before, you just got to make sure that that, that section of braid there uh, is, is okay. So I hope I'll help you, all you that's uh, new to low fishing, got a bit confused with everything that, that's out there. Uh, it, it's easy to be told the wrong information and some people uh, seem to believe that their information is right and, in, and, and a lot of times it isn't. So this is this is a simple. You know me. I'm, I'm a basic fisherman. I don't I don't go complicating things with tightness and this that, and the other. Braided fishing line because braided fishing line, uh, it's got no stretch on it, and you feel more, feel your lures better. Wire trace because your wire trace is your protection against the uh, pike's teeth, and that I use that when I'm using big big fishing lures, uh, lures with treble hooks. If you use anything like that, you've got a chance of catching a pike. Um, and you've got a chance of getting bitten off if you haven't got a wire trace. Uh, titanium wire, just because it's, it lasts longer, it's better quality than, than the normal um, uh, fishing wires that you can get. Uh, you tie your braid onto your, onto your swivel of your trace, you've got a, a stay lock snap at the bottom, um, and it's that simple. Uh, I don't use fluorocarbon leaders, uh, I've never used them um, for my pike fishing because uh, I've always used a pocket wire trace and I've always caught fish, so I don't see the need to switch to a fluorocarbon leader. Some people use fluorocarbon leaders because they think um, they're not going to catch fish because the wire trace gets them put off. Um, that's a lot of rubbish to be honest, in my opinion. Um, but another thing that I've heard that some people use is uh, they've, got, they've got a mono fishing line and then uh, as a trace they're using um, braid using a, a braid to fishing line as a, as a trace so I'll have a section like that uh, 12 inch long, in fact it's 8 inch long sometimes an 8 inch long trace of braid and braid is not tooth resistant your braid will get bitten through by, by a pike so do not use um, braid as a trace and I've, I've seen a lot of young kids do that um, I don't know where that came from I, I've just got no idea where that came from but if actually you don't, don't use it you'll get bitten off Wire trace, simple as that. And if you use it, if you use it, so just like that, you'll catch fish.